Jesus says, trust in me and you'll have an amazing future, a forever life and a world that is fantastic. Do you believe him? That's one of the big questions that we're working through as you look at the book of Luke. We think about do we trust in who Jesus is and what he's promising? And so we're looking at step by step stories from the book of Luke, people who came face to face with Jesus to see who he is, what he claimed, and how we know it's true. And tonight is no different. Tonight we come across a story of a Roman centurion who, well, he didn't come face to face with Jesus, but he knew Jesus, who Jesus was, he knew the power that Jesus had. And he trusted in Jesus. Let's see the story, shall we? So we've got a Roman centurion here. There's a Roman centurion. That's someone who was powerful. He was in charge of men, in charge of people. He had uh, servants to work his house for him. But he cared for these servants. They weren't just nobodies to him. They became part of his family. And one of them was ill. In fact, he was so ill that he was on the verge of death. So the centurion did what any caring person would do. He wanted to do whatever he could for this servant to get him better again. Now, he heard that Jesus was in the area. So he sent some people to go and talk to Jesus and say, Jesus, please come to my house. Please come and heal my servant. And now he'd done lots of really good things to show that he trusted in God. But that wasn't the reason. He just wanted Jesus to come to heal. There's no purpose behind it. But they persuaded Jesus to come. So Jesus went towards the house with them. But before he got there, the centurion sent some more people. And he said, through his people, don't come. He knew who Jesus was. He knew that Jesus had power. He saw who Jesus was. And even though he was an important person, he said, I'm not worthy, Jesus, for you to come into my house. I'm not worthy for you to come under the same roof as me. Well, I find that quite staggering. Because if I was an important person in the area, I think I'd be wanting Jesus to come and say, look who I've got in town, look who I'm hosting, look who's come to my house. But the centurion doesn't do that. The centurion just cares by a serving getting better. He also knows he's not worthy to have Jesus come into his house. So he sends his other people and they say, actually the centurion says, just say the word. Just say that the servant is healed and he's healed. The centurion knew the power that Jesus had. And so Jesus looks and goes, yeah, I'll do that. And he says, go. And so they return to the house. And when they return, they find that the servant is stood up and wet and healed. You see, the centurion recognised who Jesus was. He recognised that Jesus had power. He recognised that he wasn't worthy compared to Jesus. And Jesus saw the faith and the trust that the centurion had. And he healed his servant. Well, I guess there are several challenges for us in that passage. I guess, firstly, do we see who Jesus is? Do we see that Jesus has this power? That Jesus can just say a word and that the servant is healed? Do we trust, therefore, that Jesus can fulfil his promises? Do we trust that because Jesus died, we can have that amazing future we talked about earlier? Do we trust Jesus when he says, that will be part of his kingdom, that will be adopted into God's family. Do we trust those amazing truths? And I guess the other challenge is, are we like the centurion? Do we see our own hearts? Do we see that we're not worthy? We're not worthy for Jesus to come into our house. We're not worthy for Jesus to come near us. The centurion, there were lots of things he could have said. He could have said, look at my important position. Uh, he could have said, look what I've done in rebuilding the synagogue. 
He could say, look at this, look at this, look at this. He doesn't. He says, Jesus, I'm not worthy. I know I'm not worthy. Is that how we come before Jesus? Do we say, Jesus, we know we're not worthy. But please forgive us because of who you are, not because of who we are. We'll carry on working through the book of Luke next time. But let's pray. Dear God, we pray to help see who Jesus is and how we can come to know forgiveness and to have that amazing future, that amazing promise by trusting in him. Amen. Do join me again, same time next week, as we carry on working through this book of Luke.